The world of wildlife often holds many mysteries and meerkats. These small, seemingly harmless creatures are no exception. As if from a cartoon, they scurry across the sandy plains, wrinkling their noses and raising their heads to survey their surroundings. However, behind this attractive mask of cute animals lies an amazing and complex world full of survival, danger, and incredible abilities. Suricats bear some resemblance to gophers, but are unrelated to rodents. Suricats are part of the mongoose family and represent one species, the suricat or suricata, and the slender-tailed myrmica. Therefore, close relatives for meerkats are mongooses, and distant relatives are mongooses. Meerkats are often mistakenly classified as rodents because of their appearance and some of their typical habits, but in fact, they are predatory mammals. The closest relatives of these animals are mongooses, known as skillful killers of poisonous snakes. Suricats grow to an average of 25 to 35 centimeters in length, with tail lengths between 16 to 24 centimeters. The weight of adults barely reaches one kilogram, with an average weight of about 750 grams. The body is elongated, allowing the animals to move easily in their burrows, as well as in thickets of various vegetation. The main color depends on the habitat, so the color of the coat varies from dark brown shades to light gray, pale, and bright red tones. Suricats that live in warmer climates are characterized by a darker coat coloration, while the inhabitants of the Kalahari are characterized by a pale or slightly reddish coloration. Representatives of the family, inhabiting the territory of Angola and Namibia among the dunes, are characterized by bright red coloration. The color of the coat is not monotonous, so the hair on the head is lighter compared to the rest of the body. Around the eyes, the coat coloring is darker, which highlights the eyes. The back area is colored with longitudinal dark brown or black stripes. Thin-tailed myrmicats do not have warm, high-quality fur, so they have to sleep huddled together to stay warm. Since it is quite cold in the desert, they have to warm up in the morning hours in the sun. The tail is thin and long, cone-shaped and covered with dents, though short, fur. The tail is colored to match the coloration of the whole body, but the tip of the tail is darker, as well as the stripes on the back. The meerkat's tail is quite functional, as it helps the animals to stand on their hind legs, helps in intimidating enemies, and also helps to repel snake attacks. Meerkats have an elongated muzzle, pointed type, with a soft nose of dark brown color. Animals have a very fine sense of smell, which allows them to quickly find food for themselves, as well as to determine the appearance of strangers in their territory for many kilometers. With the help of sniff, they recognize their own, determine various diseases, approaching birth, as well as recognize strangers. The head also has crescent-shaped ears, black in color, as well as circles around the eyes. The ears are planted relatively low, which allows the animal to better hear the approach of various predators in the form of jackals. Meerkats have relatively large, forward-facing eyes, which distinguishes them from rodents. The fur around the eyes, which is dark in color, protects the eyes from the bright sun and also visually increases their size. The circles around the eyes give the impression of a scary and greedy animal, especially with large eyes, which scares away some predators. The meerkat's main food is insects and small vertebrates so they are armed with sharp molars and slightly bent incisors. They can easily handle scorpion shells, the chitinous cover of various beetles and millipedes, animal bones, and the eggs of some ground-nesting birds. Meerkats move with all four limbs and their tails held high. They can run up to 15 miles per hour over short distances, allowing them to quickly hide in their burrows when predators approach. In a hind-legged posture, these animals look for their natural enemies due to their keen eyesight, which is directed into the distance. Each paw has four long claws of non-retractable type, with longer, curved claws on the front paws. This is necessary for quick digging of dens, as well as for digging out various critters that hide in the ground. The female can be distinguished from the male by paying attention to the size of the individuals. Females are larger than males. Important. They use their sharp eyesight to keep themselves safe from various predators. When searching for food, meerkats make more use of their keen sense of smell. 
Thin-tailed myrmecats prefer to live in colonies, with each group containing up to 30 individuals related by blood. Occasionally, larger groups of up to 60 individuals are found. As a rule, individuals from other groups are not accepted, although such cases occur. The group is ruled by an adult female. Next in the hierarchy are other females and then adult males. Young individuals and cubs occupy the lowest rung. Pregnant females occupy a special position in the group, which is associated with maintaining high fecundity. Each member of the family knows his or her duties. Young males and females are busy setting up burrows under the supervision of more experienced family members. Older members of the family stand guard and also hunt for prey. Changing of the guard takes place every three to four hours. Changed guards go in search of sustenance. Merkits are considered quite caring parents not only in relation to their cubs, but also to the cubs of other females. The entire pack is involved in the feeding of the offspring. Young meerkats look after the cubs if the females go hunting. At night, all huddle together and warm each other with the warmth of their bodies. These animals prefer to lead a daytime life. At the first rays of the sun, they appear on the surface of the ground to warm up because the night was cold. After that, each animal begins to engage in its duties. Some of them stand up to guard the living space, and some of them go in search of food. When the peak of heat comes, meerkats hide in their burrows, while they either widen or deepen their burrows, as well as restore some underground communications. If necessary, they bury unnecessary passages. In other words, they do not sit idle. When the heat begins to subside, the time of hunting comes for the animals. After sunset, meerkats go to their burrows to sleep. The meerkats have to constantly roam in search of food, which is accompanied by intergroup skirmishes for food territories. Every fifth individual dies in such interclan squabbles. Females are particularly affected, as they are the most fierce defenders of their dens. There may also be intrafamily squabbles between the dominant female and females who dare to become pregnant without permission. The dominant female carefully monitors this process and, in case of what the dominant female can take the life not only of the offending female, but also of her offspring. Therefore, the control of reproduction is strict. The mechanism of overpopulation is arranged in such a way that the breeding females can kill their cubs themselves or leave them in their burrows when they need to go in search of other territories. The cubs of a dominant female may be attacked by another female who has encroached on the dominant female's post. She leaves her offspring alive, but kills all the other cubs. If this happens, it is an indication that the dominant female can no longer hold power and is being replaced by a young, strong, and fertile female. Interesting fact. Conflicts practically do not occur if there is enough food for all. When the food base starts to become scarce, then fights between two neighboring families begin. Where do they live and what do they eat? Their habitat is associated with the southern regions of the African continent, represented by the territories of such countries as Namibia, South Africa, Botswana, Angola, Lesotho. Large numbers are concentrated in the expanses of the Kalahari and Namib deserts. They settle in open areas and deserts, where there is practically no vegetation in the form of trees and shrubs. They are suitable for conditions of plain territories, as well as savanna conditions, where hard ground prevails. These are ideal conditions for digging underground labyrinths and searching for food. There are not so many other representatives of fauna in the territories of thin-tailed myrmecats to diversify the diet of these animals. They feed on any critters that live within their territories. This can be various beetles, ants, and their larvae, millipedes. If scorpions and spiders are caught, they will also be eaten. They have naturally developed resistance against the poison of scorpions, as well as various protective secretions of insects and millipedes. The diet includes small vertebrates in the form of lizards, snakes, and small birds. They destroy the nests of those birds that incubate their eggs on the ground or in the grass. Despite the assumption, meerkats are not immune to snake venom. So a meerkat dies after being bitten by a snake. In fact, such a phenomenon is rare, as meerkats come out victorious in a fight with snakes, as they have unique mobility and reaction. The meerkats often eat succulent parts of various vegetation, root systems, and bulbs. 
Despite the many negative factors affecting their population numbers, meerkats are considered a thriving species with minimal risk of extinction. Nowadays, agriculture is increasingly being developed both in southern Africa and Namibia, which is causing great damage to the meerkat's habitat. It should be noted that man is not going to stop there, jeopardizing the wildlife. Surikats can be easily tamed, so these animals are actively traded in African countries. The removal of these animals from wildlife, although causing damage, but not so significant compared to the deprivation of natural habitats. Surikats are of no interest to humans, as their meat is not eaten and their fur has no economic value. They play a very important role in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. Thanks to meerkats, the population of poisonous snakes, which poses serious threat to humans, does not get out of control. Natives of the African continent believe that meerkats protect not only them, but also their livestock from werewolves, so they domesticate their young. Nature has made sure that the balance of the ecosystem of our planet is not disturbed. All species of animals participate in this process, so there are no useless representatives of wildlife on Earth, although some people try to claim otherwise. It is such people who pose a huge threat to the further existence of many species, both fauna and flora.